This is part five of the lecture notes for chapter two. Um, you may have noticed I'm trying to go a little bit faster, especially through material that I know is not quite as important. It's just a lot of, of material. I apologize for that, but it, this, this is just a long chapter. It won't always be this bad, but um, anyway, we're just going to keep digging at it. We're almost there. Um, when we say salt, when we're, we're talking about um, salt, we normally mean, or almost always mean, table salt. But table salt is only one kind of salt, so I just want you to know what salt means in chemistry. It means a, a compound that is held together by ionic bonds, so it's an ionic compound that is able to dissociate in water. Um, as long as the ionic compound does not have hydrogen as the cation or hydroxide as the anion. Um, <clears throat> because if it had hydrogen as a cation, that would make it an acid. And if it had hydroxide as the anion, that would make it a base. So a salt is just like anything that is ionic that doesn't have hydrogen or, or hydroxide, you know, in it. So, um... There are lots of salts, not just sodium chloride. Electrolytes are ionic compounds. Um, they can be acids, bases, or salts, but they release ions into solution. Um, a lot, some of the ions released would be sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride ions, and bicarbonate. And these are all of these are listed in the study guide that I posted on Moodle. So make sure you go through that because I, I tried to make sure to, to um, give you examples of chemicals that you're going to be seeing in this course and not give you this long list of chemicals you have to learn that you aren't ever going to even need to know. But, but these are very important. Sodium, potassium, calcium are essential for muscle contractions, nerve impulses, um, the heartbeat, you know, I mean... Um, and then chloride and bicarbonate um, are ions that are important as well. Bicarbonate is a very important buffer that helps to maintain um, the pH of body fluids. So um, anyway, electrolytes, remember, are just substances that can release ions into solution. And when they do that, the solution can actually conduct electricity. And it's that's important because... Um, We've, we've got electricity running all through our bodies. Um, that's, I mean, the, the definition of a nerve impulse is an electric current that travels through our nerves. So uh, let's see, buffers are chemicals that we have in our body fluids that help to resist the pH change. So um, when the pH of our blood or our body fluids goes too, too far below 7.35, or above 7.45, it is very dangerous, very, very dangerous. So we have buffers that if the pH goes too high, they will add hydrogen ions back to the solution. If the pH goes too low, they will take hydrogen ions out of the solution. They will remove hydrogen ions from the solution. A good example you can probably relate to is an antacid. We take antacids. Uh, seems like the older I get, the more I have an, an, an Rolaids in my drawer right now, and I have a favorite kind, so that's pretty sad. But um, I like the chewable kind that tastes like strawberry. But anyway, <laughs> um, antacids, what they do is they remove excess hydrogen ions in the stomach, so they make your stomach, it doesn't make your stomach um, neutral or basic, it's still going to be acidic in your stomach, but it's just going to raise the pH. Like if it was one, it might raise it, you know, to two or three, you know, it's still going to be an acid environment, an acidic environment in your stomach, but it's just going to be a higher pH. Um, and a lot of times that helps to, um, <clears throat> helps you with your, with your stomach, uh, discomfort. Okay. Um, now we're moving on to Probably the most important part of this chapter, because it, this part, well, the, the rest of what's in, in the slideshow is going to come up in the other chapters um, over and over and over again. These are the macromolecules. So we're going to start with, there's four macromolecules. There's carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, 
and nucleic acids. So we're going to start with carbohydrates. Um, you need to know chemically what they are. The uh, name tells you that they contain carbon, they contain hydrogen, and they contain oxygen. But what the name doesn't tell you, oh, and sorry, the reason that they, we know they contain oxygen is the ending of this word is A-T-E. Anytime you have eight on the end, A-T-E on the end of a chemical name, it means that oxygen is in that chemical. So um, <clears throat> the ratio of carbon to hydrogen and oxygen is going to be very close to one to two to one. So you're going to have about the same amount of carbon and oxygen atoms and about double the amount of hydrogen atoms as what you do carbon and oxygen. So examples of carbohydrates are sugars and starches. Um, carbohydrates are primarily a good source of energy. That's what they're for. And there are three major types. Mono is one, di is two, and poly is many. So monosaccharides would mean one sugar or a simple sugars. Di would be two sugars. And poly would be many sugars linked together in a chain. Okay, glucose is a very important monosaccharide. And this is, you need to know this figure right here. You need to be able to look at that figure and know that that is glucose, okay? And you also need to know the chemical formula. So what this uh, figure B is called the structural formula because that's the structure of a glucose molecule. It's shaped like a hexagon. But you also need to know the chemical formula is C6H12O6. So glucose is the most important fuel in the body. We also call it uh, blood sugar and it is a monosaccharide. There are other monosaccharides, fructose, and um, there's one called galactose, but glucose is the most important. Um, the Probably the most common, most well-known disaccharide is sucrose because it is also called table sugar. It's, it's the sugar that um, we add to our tea and our coffee and you know cakes and cookies and all that kind of stuff. It's table sugar. And it's actually a combination of two monosaccharides. One is glucose and the other is fructose. Um, <clears throat> fructose is very similar to glucose, but it's, um, I always call it fruit sugar. It's the sugar found in fruits like apples and oranges. So sucrose, just like glucose, is very soluble in water. It's formed by dehydration synthesis when glucose and fructose combine, that's dehydration synthesis, and it's broken down by hydrolysis. Now, before we can use sucrose for energy, enzymes in our bodies have to break down the sucrose into glucose and fructose. Hydrolysis has to occur because our cells are going to use the glucose for energy, not the sucrose. But it, uh, fortunately, this happens very quickly. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the top, this is an example of a dehydration synthesis where sucrose is formed. So you can see glucose and fructose are the reactants. You can see that a water molecule is removed by removing an OH from glucose and an H from fructose. So that's the dehydration part. And you end up forming sucrose, which is a disaccharide, and water as um, products. And then the reverse of that hydrolysis is when sucrose, which is a disaccharide, is broken down by at the addition of water. So it's the addition of water is the hydro part and the breakdown is the lysis part. And then you can see the products are glucose and fructose, which are two smaller, simpler sugars. Polysaccharides are chains of monosaccharides, and most of the time the chain, the monosaccharides in the chain are glucose. So starches are chains of glucose that are manufactured by plants. Cellulose is a component of plant cell walls. We can't digest it, but we do need it because um, it is... Well, it's the, it's the fiber that we get from um, raw vegetables like, you know, lettuce, you know. So it helps us digest, but it, it helps the food go through our digestive system easier. But we can't actually digest it and, and get nutrients from it. 
Glycogen is similar to plant starch, but we call it animal starch because it's only made in animals. It is produced by the liver um, and by our muscles, and it is also a chain of glucose. So, so these are the three polysaccharides that you need to know. Lipids are the next class of macromolecule. Um, lipids also contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but the difference is the oxygen content is much lower than in carbohydrates. So that's going to be the difference. Lipids include fats, which are solids, you know, solid lipids, and then oils are liquids and waxes. Most lipids are insoluble in water. Um, we hear about uh, fatty acids are actually components of lipids. They're, they're what fatty acids um, are formed when lipids break down. But fats, steroids, phospholipids, which are found in the, um, they form the plasma membrane of our cells. But where the carbohydrates provide us with quick energy, lipids provide us with um, in stored energy. Okay? Um, a fatty acid is a long hydrocarbon chain. That means carbons, you see the carbon chain here? Carbon atoms are bonded to each other, and then they are also surrounded with hydrogen atoms bonded to the carbon. So this is the hydrocarbon chain part all the way to here. And then at this point, you have this group that has a C, O, OH, that is a carboxyl group or carboxylic acid group, and um, that's always at the end of the fatty acid. That's the acid part of the fatty acid. So a fatty acid is part of a lipid, and it's a hydrocarbon chain with a carboxyl group at the end. This is what a fatty acid looks like. <clears throat> You can tell the difference chemically in a saturated fat and an unsaturated fat because in an unsaturated fat, one of the bonds, at least, it can be more than one, but at least one bond between carbon atoms in the chain, in the hydrocarbon chain, is a double bond. If it's saturated, all the bonds are single covalent bonds, okay? So, and what that does is the saturated fatty acid is going to be straight. The structure is going to be straight. It's not going to have any bend in it. And it's going to form a solid fat most of the time. And unsaturated is going to have kinks in it. It's going to be bendy and flexible, and it's going to form into oils. Um, One of the most important fats, which we call, we just call it body fat, is actually triglyceride. And triglyceride is a fat that has um, glycerol, and this is the, the purple structure is the glycerol. And then three fatty acid tails. And you can look at these just, just um, so you can have some practice with it. There are two tails that are saturated and one that's unsaturated. <clears throat> Um, excuse me. But anyway, there are three fatty acid tails attached to a glycerol. And when, when the fatty acids and the glycerol combine, that's another example of a dehydration synthesis reaction. But that forms a triglyceride and water is released. But when the triglyceride, if like say we eat a steak and that steak has, um, you know, steak is not just meat. It also has fat in it. So when our body starts to break down the fat, that fat is, is a triglyceride. Um, and so a hydrolysis reaction occurs and breaks down the, the triglycerides in the steak into glycerol and fatty acids. And um, the water is added back. So that's why it's called hydrolysis. Okay. Um, Steroids are also lipid molecules, but remember this figure here. Remember this, the look of this because it is a molecule that has four rings. So this four ring structure can be cholesterol or it can be steroid hormones like testosterone and estrogen because cholesterol is actually the precursor of testosterone and estrogen. 
testosterone and estrogen are formed when cholesterol is converted into them. So they're all four ring structures.